What's up designers, welcome back to the channel, it's Jimmy and one of the most common questions that I get from you guys is how much math and engineering do I actually need in order to become an industrial designer and this is what I'm going to be answering in this video. This is a prototyping class that all industrial designers had to take, learn how to implement mechanisms into our products in order to create a certain motion. So say if you wanted to have a product open up or close or expand or contract you're gonna be using these mechanisms it's one thing to study and learn about these mechanisms and understand how they work but it's another story to actually create it and put it to the test so in this class they teach us how to put them to the test by creating our mechanisms out of simple products like foam core like craft wood anything that you can get your hands on in order to create this mechanism and just to test to see if your mechanism actually works a mechanism Mechanism is just a mechanism, a gear is just a gear, a pulley is just a pulley. They don't really mean anything. It's only when you are designing a product where you need it to transform or to change or have kind of momentum in some way like an engine, then you will learn about these mechanisms to apply them in order to give this product that functionality. For example, my buddy Tyler here, he's designing this panther toy and he wants the rear legs to look like they're running. In order to achieve that motion, he's decided to use a lot of different gears that are connected together. As the gears turn, they move the legs in a motion that simulates the panther running. As industrial designers, we want to understand and master these mechanisms so that we can apply them to our own products. The best way to learn about these mechanisms is just look around your house and pick something up that looks like it moves or transforms. You probably have a lamp that adjusts in some way. And so just really study it, understand how it's actually doing doing what it's doing, what are the things that are connected, what are the things that have to move, what are the things that are structural, understand it, study it, so that when you are designing your products, you can apply these same principles, these same engineering mechanisms to achieve the same type of a function or motion. At the end of the day, that has really been my extent and experience with mechanical engineering. It's about understanding these mechanisms and applying them to whatever product that needs it that will serve serve that purpose or serve that function. In a bit here, I'm gonna jump to a clip that I shot for you guys talking about a really cool phone mount and how it kinda transforms. Let's just hit that clip right now. What's up designers, welcome back to the channel. So this is gonna be another design lesson for you guys with the phone mounts that I showed you guys in the first video. Go ahead and check that video out before you watch this one. I'm going to be holding this phone right next to my face so that you guys can hear me really well. In industrial design, I know a lot of you guys are wondering how much math do you need to learn? How much engineering do you need to learn? And yes, you need to learn a little bit of those two, but not as much as you think. As we guys can see with this one here, it's actually very, very simple. There's not a lot going on. It's mostly just this ball joint that moves around. Check out this one that I have. Booyah, this one is craziness isn't it so you guys can see that this thing has a lot of functionality we want to be able to study how this thing works so that we know how to incorporate them into our own products when you're trying to add stuff that has a lot of motion stuff that transforms stuff that moves you're going to need to have to figure out how this stuff works and that's more of on the engineering side rather than the design side let's take a look at this guy right here this is what we call the knob and the knob is what allows you to change things by turning it and so this one here it's a locking knob so as I turn it it loosens up and that allows me to move this arm move it to this position I just turn the knob and it tightens Ooh, look at this book designers what a nice book isn't it it's actually not gonna be the book I wanted to talk to you guys about it's actually gonna be this one here talking all about kinematic mechanisms and articulation mechanisms this is a book that my professor had us make in order to study the mechanisms figure out the different real-world products that use these mechanisms 
mechanisms and then also talk about the mechanisms and create some type of an image so that we really, really know the mechanisms well. Kinematics, again, is all about motions and articulation is all about transforming. So let's jump right into it and it's gonna talk about kinematics and the different type of motions you can achieve utilizing these mechanisms. Linear motion right here, like a train, rotational motion like tires, we have reciprocating motion like this tool here continually going left and right and boom this is actually the one i wanted to talk to you guys about this is the oscillating motion obviously we know that many many fans on the market right now they do this type of a motion that is oscillating motion so we're going to need to figure out which type of mechanism will allow us to have this type of motion if that's what we want to do with the fan that we're going to be designing shaft and cam this is an example of this is what i showed you guys earlier with that crab that's essentially how that toy works using shaft and cams pneumatics here is essentially being powered by air we have cables we have belts pulleys and chain and sprocket chain and sprocket is probably one of the more earlier mechanisms that we were introduced to as a kid just because that's how bicycles work something also very common are gears gears are used almost everywhere especially in watches now it's not smart watches but old school watches and we got screwdriver we have bar linkages which is what I showed you guys earlier with the lamp that's how it allows us to move in all those different type of positions we have hydraulics crank and solenoid if you guys are wondering how I actually made this um, these images here I created in SolidWorks they're all 3d and then I rendered it in Keyshot. so I'm gonna be going through that later on in this series as we go through the industrial design process and then this book here is put together using Adobe InDesign. Springs, limiters, key, ratchet, detent, and my project. So at the end of all of this, of all the studying and learning about how these mechanisms work, our final goal is to apply it to a product. And in this case, I ended up designing this Batmobile out of laser cut acrylic. It has some rotational motion. It has some linkages with the front cannons. It has two side cannons that use springs to move them back into position. And how they're being fired is the rear wheels when they rotate there is a cam locked onto the shaft which pushes them forward and the springs pushes them back and then also the cams in the rear also rotate moving the spoiler up and down okay let's move on to articulation boys and girls articulation is all about nesting stacking stuff into one another we have docking here such as old school phones telescope where things extend, sliding where things slide on a track, <clears throat> a pivot just like a doorknob, we have swivel like joysticks on a gaming controller, fan such as the shutter blades on a camera lens, then we have folding and a hard fold is like folding a piece of paper. Bellows is essentially um, an accordion pretty much. A soft fold is a fold like on fabric where it'll fold over but there's not quite a hard spot where it's clearly folded. After learning all the different type of articulating mechanisms we then begin to apply it to our product. To start off with is a six by six cube and then we're supposed to transform it into something else. So in this case, I ended up transforming my cube into a tank. If we continue on, we'll see the knob again. You loosen it, it allows you to extend 
this arm. This part here goes inside of this part, similar to what you would see in a telescope. And so that's essentially what this is, is that it allows you to extend your part and make it even longer. Telescope, you don't need a locking mechanism. That's when you figure out tolerances. We can see that it has this phone locking mechanism. If I push on this end, the other end pops out. Very simple sliding mechanism. If I push on the other end, the other end pops out. If I push it, it moves back into position automatically. This is done utilizing a internal spring. The springs will help it move back into the neutral position. What we want to do is put it in a position where we can mount the phone. So we don't want it to keep coming back into neutral position. So what the designers did or the engineers did is they have a locking mechanism. When you push it far enough, it'll lock into place just like that. So this allows you to lock this position into place to be able to mount your phone. This button gets pressed naturally as the phone is backed up against the back plate. It pops and releases the locking mechanism. So you guys can see there's a lot of different articulating points. If we wanted articulating points in our own products, we're gonna need to learn it and then incorporate it into our own products so that we can create awesome products that move, transform, and all the above. All right, guys, the rain is picking up. It's time for me to go. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.